A very pleasant good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to the People's Forum of In the Streets with Big Stone. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to talk about our neighbor, our next door neighbor. We're talking about the Haitian people. We're talking about our own people, the Haitian. I just read the newspaper this morning, ladies and gentlemen. It really disturbs me. We're talking about the United States government could be paving way to deport 50 thousand Asian people. Can you imagine? 80 with a population of 10 million people. Can they handle 50,000 Asian after this devastating hurricane that they experienced in 2010? Do you think 80 is ready? Let's go into the newspaper and read the details. Washington, United States. A letter from the United States Department of State could pave the way for deporting 50,000 Asian residents by Thanksgiving holiday later this month, enjoying a reprieve from certain immigration rules that were waived after the 2010 earthquake, according to reports here. The ruling that conditions have improved enough in Haiti and in Central America to resume normal immigration rules in those regions comes days before the Department of Homeland Security is expected to announce whether to renew the special status according to the Washington Post. The Miami Arrow reports that political leaders in Miami-Dade, Florida, home to the largest concentration of Asians protected by the special status known as the Temporary Protected Status, or TPS, have urged President Donald Trump to continue the waiver. But the paper quickly added that the State Department decision could be a prelude to that status being lifted. More than 300,000 Central Americans and Asian living in the United States under a form of temporary permission no longer need to be shielded from deportation, the State Department told the Homeland Security official the Post reported. Last week, United States Secretary of State Rex Tillerson sent a letter to Acting U.S. Department of Homeland Security, DHS, Secretary Elaine Duke, to inform her that condition in Central America and Haiti that had been used to justify the protection no longer necessitate a reprieve for the migrants, some of whom have been allowed to live and work in the United States for 20 years under a program known as TPS. It is said Tillerson assessment required by law has not been made public, but its recommendation were confirmed by several Trump administration officials familiar with its contents. The error reports that the officials spoke on the condition of anonymity. On Monday, the Trump administration said it will end TPS that allows some Nicaraguans to live and work in the United States while leaving the door open to canceling the same program for more Asian and Salvadorians in the coming week. The DHS said about 2,000 Nicaraguans who have TPS must leave or seek another form of legal residency, though those affected will be able to stay until January 5th, 2019. The status had been granted to some Nicaraguans, who had fled their homeland after the devastation caused by Hurricane Mitch in 1998. Based on all available information, the country condition in Nicaragua now exceed Hurricane Mitch, said a senior administration official. The 1998 hurricane killed more than 2,000 people in Nicaragua and caused over US $1 billion in damage. Concerning the status of Asian, that is set to expire in January 2018, affecting about 50,000 people, most of them in Florida, while Salvadorian status expired in March 2018, affecting nearly 200,000 people. Homeland Security officials also announced that Honduras will get a six-month TPS extension until July 2018, after the program was set to expire in January. Just fewer than 60,000 Hondurans have received TPS. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, we could have gone on and on and on and on with this newspaper article. We really don't know what is really happening in the United States of America or the immigration policy. But we're talking about Asians. Now, Asian has been the kind of people that, as far as I'm concerned, are extremely strong people. A matter of fact, if you can remember, the Asian Revolution, led by Toussaint and Dutty Bookman. As you know, Dutty Bookman is a Jamaican that went to Haiti and assisted Toussaint in leading the successful revolt. Ever since, ladies and gentlemen, since that successful revolt, the Asian has been coming under attack. Remember, the French ordered the Asian government to pay hundreds of millions of dollars back to them after they were the one that actually had this, the, 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 the Asian in slavery. Yet still, they say the Asian government owe them millions of dollars or millions of euro, whichever uh, way you want to calculate that. I think aid is getting a raw deal. Jamaica, we are bound to suffer. Yes, we are bound to suffer because Haiti is not more than just, I think it's about maybe an hour and a half or two hours away from Jamaica. Can you imagine the influx of Asian that will be coming to Jamaica? We already have our problems here in Jamaica. High crime rate, 1,359 people killed thus far this year. So can you imagine 50,000 Asian being deported to Haiti? Haiti is considered the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. I feel this for these Asian people. So Jamaica, we need to buckle up now. Do we have space to accommodate more Asians? As you know, Asians are still coming to Jamaica because our borders are open. And I have no problem if we can accommodate, if we can help our fellow Asian, then of course we should do so. But Jamaica, brace yourself. There's some rough time ahead, and only us can really get ourselves out of the predicament. We need to start working assiduously. We need to start making sure that we, the farmers, go back to planting. I heard recently on the news that the Jamaican government is spending millions upon millions upon millions of dollars importing stuff into the island, stuff that we can grow in Jamaica, Irish potato, carrots, cabbage these are stuff that we can grow peas ginger these are stuff that we can grow right here in jamaica and jamaica do we know where our food is being processed how our food are being uh, preserved how our food are being prepared if you look at what is happening in jamaica you can see that most of our youngsters are going wild we're not sure if the water is not contaminated. We're not sure if the food supply is not contaminated. Because ladies and gentlemen, only if something is definitely wrong can you see for the last 10 years over a thousand people being killed in this country. I was talking to a very good friend of mine, Sylvester de Cambre, last night. And this brother make a whole lot of sense. We have to go back to parenting. We have to go back to nurturing our children. We have to go back to taking the responsibility for our children's action. We have to go back to uh, making sure we arm our teacher. And when I say arm, we mean teach them the disciplinary skills how to deal with these youngsters. Youngsters who are attacking our deans, beating up our teachers. And then the parents that they go home to don't even ask a question. They come back with guns, they come back with machete, they come back with knives. So our system is going through hell. Jamaica, we need to start thinking about doing stuff for self. We need to go back to the Honorable Martha Scarvey. Because the Honorable Martha Scarvey have left the blueprint for us. This is my take on what is happening, ladies and gentlemen. I know there must be some effects on Jamaica if the United States really and truly deport 50,000 people. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening to me today and I do hope that you have a great day. Thank you very much for watching.